In this video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the figures that you will need to go with the Vintage Collection Jabba's Palace playset. <laughs> Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Box Bounty video. Now as I mentioned in the intro, this is going to be a video all about the Vintage Collection Jabba's Palace playset and which figures you can get to complete the scene which lines they are from and of course how much it's going to cost you to buy them now i do want to do a quick shout out to subscriber shakes the clone for requesting this video and before we get started if you do happen to enjoy this video please click the like button as it really does help the video and the channel and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and with all that being said we're going to start off by talking about the figures that are actually on the box and then later on in the video we can look at some of the extra figures that you will need to create that Jabba's Palace scene and believe me there are some really really good figures to look at which aren't on the box. So first up we're going to look at Boba Fett and for screen accuracy you are going to want to get the Return of the Jedi version, the one with the red gauntlets. The figure you'll want here is the 2004 VOTC or Vintage Original Trilogy Collection Boba Fett which was also repacked I believe in the 30th anniversary and also onto the Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Jedi, I can't remember which, VC09 in the Vintage Collection, which was in obviously in the first run of the Vintage Collection. The one that was recently reissued was on the Empire Strikes Back card and of course is the Empire Strikes Back version. So you definitely want the Return of the Jedi version with the red gauntlets. You'll probably be able to pick up Boba Fett for around £25, I would say, the equivalent of around $35, $40 maybe which I guess is a good price for such an old figure, which is you know, reasonably rare, I guess, these days. Next up, we have Ephant Mon. Now, this is an absolute monster of a figure. Excuse the pun, but it really is. You certainly get loads and loads of plastic for your buck with this figure. But however, Jabba's head of security is actually a very highly detailed figure indeed. It's well worth picking up in my opinion. He was released in 2002 in the Saga series and he will set you back around £30 or again $40. Just in front of Ephant Mon there on the box we have the Jawas and the lighter and taller of the two shouldn't be too hard to pick up these days with it not being long released in the vintage collection. If you want the shorter darker version as well then you will need to pick up the 3.75 inch black series two pack now for people in the uk this was a pretty cheap one it came in the entertainer for about five pounds i think but it has since gone up on ebay you're going to look at about 20 pounds to pick up that two pack and if you're in the states you're going to be looking at again about 25 30 dollars the Gamorrean Guard was a reissue in the vintage collection last year and can still be picked up for retail price and Lando Calrissian, although a great figure, seems to be 2009's peg warmer. So both of those figures you shouldn't have a problem picking up whatsoever. And that can only be a good thing. They are two decent figures in my opinion and obviously a must for the Jabba's Palace playset. Han Solo in Carbonite you of course get included in the set so no worries there. And Leia Bouche was also repacked in the Vintage Collection at the beginning of 2019. Failing that, you could pick her up in the 3.75 inch black series. Pretty cheap, although she will not have the photo real face deco. We now move over to the right hand side of the box and you can see Reese sticking out there. So no worries on that front. He was included in the box. But now we do come on to the figure that I and many others are still waiting to be released on a vintage car back. And that is, of course, Bib Fortuna. The figure itself is in desperate need of an update with the 2006 Saga collection still being the best option. I'm not a massive fan of this figure. He, he just doesn't look right. The head looks like he's in pain. You know, that facial expression that he's got just does not look right whatsoever. Plus the articulation is, is pretty limited too. You can see there he only has the swivel elbows, which is not great in this day and age. Bib Fortuna in the Saga collection will set you back about 25 to 30 pounds or 40 dollars again. Bit of a theme here aren't they? All the figures seem to be around that price range to complete this set. Moving on to the main gangster himself, Jabba the Hutt, and this one is going to prove expensive I'm afraid. Right now the best version came exclusive with the Sail Barge or the most recent version. And I can't see many people splitting the figure up from the barge particularly. Other than that, another expensive option would be the Jabba that was included in the 
2015 3.75 inch black series multi-pack that also included the Rancor and a bunch of other figures. The Jabba is pretty good, although I'm not a massive fan of the white drool coming through his mouth. I don't think that looks too realistic. And I think it just could have been, you know, a much better paint application on that on that piece of his mouth. An even greater option would be the 2010 Jabba that included his throne, Ula the Dancer and Salacious Crumb. A really, really nice Jabba, this one with plenty of articulation, possibly more than the Vintage Collection version, in fact. But again, this set is not cheap and it will set you back possibly over 180, 200 pounds even. So maybe even as close to $250 I would expect. Other than that, you can do what I have done and use the vintage Kenner version of Jabba the Hutt, which is still a great looking Jabba with plenty of nostalgia included, of course. I use that one for my Jabba's Palace playset as I keep my vintage collection one on the barge. So that's it for the figures that Hasbro have included on the box, but what about the other figures from Jabba's Palace which are needed to complete the scene? Well, I can tell you that there are many, and if I was to talk about them all, then this video would be possibly an hour long. So instead, I will talk about the few that I think are up to today's standards and are well worth picking up. First up, we have Hermie Odell or Odell, and similar to the Efant Mon figure, this guy is big. It's a huge piece of plastic once again, really heavy. But again, it's uh, full of detail, doesn't lack anything in that, in that sense. It does have a lot of soft goods as well on the figure, so it's a really, really nice figure. He was released in 2007 in the 30th anniversary collection, and you could probably pick him up for about £35, $40. Next up, we have a vintage collection figure, and that one is Woof, and this is an absolutely lovely figure, really, really good. In fact, in my opinion, it probably is one of the best vintage collection figures to date. Articulation, detail, paint apps and soft goods are all there. He really, really is a top, top figure. Unfortunately, because of that and his rarity, he will set you back a fair bit on the secondary market. I think roughly they go for about £60, $70, $80, maybe something like that. Whilst we are on the subject of green neek toes, there is also another one called Jiran or Jiran. Released in 2009 as part of the Legacy Collection, this figure is highly, highly sought after and for very good reason. Similar to Woof, it's a great figure with loads of detail, really screen accurate this figure and as I mentioned before, highly sought after. He could be described as a Rancor Keeper, I guess. He's the guy that comforts the sobbing Malachili after the death of the Rancor. Again, this figure, as I mentioned, is expensive on the secondary market. You're gonna look at maybe 70 pounds or 65, 70 dollars if you're lucky. That brings me seamlessly onto Malakili or the Rancor Keeper, another figure released in 2009 Legacy Collection and another figure that we really should have on his own vintage card as part of the vintage collection. A great looking figure this one, he's one of the original 96 as well and I'm sure you know we will get him eventually on that vintage card, it will just take a bit of time. If you can't wait until then he will be another one that will set you back roughly around £50, $65, something like that. Now, of course, there are many other figures that you could include with the Jabba's Palace scene and many of them being last released in the Power of the Force 2 line, such as the Max Rebo band, Ishi Tib, EV99, just to name a few. You also have the Wike drummers from the Special Editions, which is the Ak Rev figure and Umpa Stay. I think they came, one of those came out in the Legacy Collection and the other in the 30th anniversary. Each came with half the drum and you need to buy both to get that complete drum. We also had a Yak Face or Salt Murray released in the Vintage Collection, but there is also some big holes to fill. Squidhead or Tesek being the main culprit, he was last released in 2001's Power of the Jedi line and desperately needs updating and released in the Vintage Collection. Again, another one of those 96 original figures that we need in the vintage collection. So what do you guys think? Let me know who you would like updated and released on a vintage style card and let me know if I've missed any obvious characters that we would need for our Jabba's Palace displays. That's all for this video. I wanna thank everyone for watching and of course, we'll see you on the next one. <music>